Welcome! This is what this video is about. I do love a surprise. I used a paint map to wipe a window, and as you can see, that paint map is very clearly solid. I just rendered out a half size of it, and full screen play reveals a bit of a surprise where Blender didn't exactly listen to wiping a windshield, but this is still worth watching. It looks like a uh, UV curiosity happened here. And removing uh, water droplets from a window can be pretty satisfying. I'm not dissatisfied with that surprise. I'm just a little surprised at that surprise. This is the scene as it was laid out. I'm not teaching you how to make traffic. If you wanted to learn how to make traffic, it is an environment for the entire window. It is not me teaching you how to make cars. Thanks for tuning in anyway. I wish you best of luck. What we are doing is experimenting with materials and particle systems that need their seed jogged from time to time. And then when we go through the animation, we use an object to create a difference between the particle and the material that they're on. And so these particles are emitting from a windscreen. It's all pretty simple. And uh, you can reveal some magic this way. If this is the sort of thing that interests you and you would like to sink your teeth into a little bit of a uh, surprise result from time to time, then this is exactly the video for you. <laughs> Get ready. Hello. Hi. Hola. Handle and greeting. Let's get to it. The exciting world of altering particles. You know the basics. Now let's see how the magic is done. I think I'll go to frame one and immediately take care of the environment texture. I'll make it an image texture and I will open in a new folder I've created called a wiper the image of traffic at night just to get that out of the way immediately. So the background is now image at night but it does not map to the camera. So one way I can do that is to shift F3, go into the uh, environment node tree type and with the image texture control T Node Wrangler allows me to do that command. Shift F5 up here in this corner, Windows 0 and Control Z. There's the image and it's all stretched out and weird. What if I do window? Yep. Okay. So window allows me to do that. Home lets me see the extent of the camera border. And no matter where I go with that camera border uh, or if I slip out of camera view, it is now looking at the traffic at night. If ever I need to just stop doing that, I disconnect this socket right here in the background node and it goes to gray. I think I'm going to give myself something a little bit more attractive, uh, something along those lines right there. Or it might be nicer for me to mix because I don't always want to see this. I'm going to mix it with a color, but I'll set the factor back and forth as needed. So a color mix RGB and then a factor of zero gives me this and a factor of one gives me something more interesting uh, so that I can double check the status of what I have in mind. The uh, checker, woo boy, <laughs> the checker texture going also by window would probably give me a distorted five by five. I think I'm going to have to kind of leave it like that and camera. It maps to the camera. I just need, oh, isn't that fun? I just need something basic. All right. And so as a texture, if I scale the Y, this gets, uh, what am I looking at? My camera is a 16 by nine format. So if I scale the X, uh, 16, I don't, let's try 16 divided by nine. Does that do it? No, that's the opposite of it. Nine divided by 16. There it is. Now I have checkers because I'm compensating for the distortion of the aspect ratio. Meh. Okay. Back into the material node tree type. And that is awfully distracting. If I have to see that everywhere, it's going to be, it's going to be hard. Let me darken this white. All right. For right now. First, I thought a gradient texture. Then I thought a checker texture. These are the things that happened. 
in a mind of someone who has a little bit of a plan. So if I come out of the camera in rendered view, the whole 3D view is filled with that checker texture, whether the uh, you know whether it's small or big. So Shift Z to get back into a, a solid view. I think I need to make a windshield, and I want that windshield to be visible from the camera. I'm going to Alt G Alt R the camera, Control Space to hide and reveal the manipulator widget. RX90 that object when I look through the camera the background is still the same now looking at the camera I'll back it up just a little bit I want to look through I guess I said windshield so there it is go to frame uh, go to layer 2 create the plane is this really what I want it is kind of what I want um, I might just save myself the work and go to a rounded cube T I'll increase the subdivisions up to eight because I'm only going to keep one of these six rounded cube sides. I can tab into edit mode and make that happen uh, by selecting four of these and hitting control plus until that selection comes around to meet mm, there that one face XF. Now I have what is essentially a curved windshield. Still pretty sluggish, but then it holds and comes back, and that's going to be lovely. Shift, <clears throat> left arrow, gets me to the beginning of this very short animation. Let's paint. Let's save that paint. I'm clicking on the canvas. I am now looking at everything to do with the canvas, and I'm going to switch it from format of vertex to a format of image sequence. I can increase the resolution, but I've found that I don't really need to. 256 is also, by the way, the default for this. Did you know? That square represents 256. If you hit one on the number pad, this is actual size, a one-to-one -one ratio. If you knew that, then you probably just fast forwarded. I want to paint. I want to paint a wet map. So my output, pardon me, paint map, paint map is going to be a PNG paint map. I'm going to use the map I just made and I'm going to put it in my, I'm going to put it in my wiper. I am wiping with paint. That's the idea. So blend, cache, wiper, scene, and I'm always more comfortable saying dynamic paint one as a folder for saving things. I'm just more comfortable doing that. So there's one brush and there's one canvas. Once you have the animation set up for the timing, then, uh, you know, bake it. It's not going to take long. A wonderful thing to do for paint would be to make the brush into a solid. This is actually just a series of edges and that is going to create trouble. I think an F is going to do us nicely. <laughs> Just, there you go. F it. And if you needed more straight out of your brush, then add in an edge loop. There's nothing magnificent about this. It is, after all, the proxy. Now our brush is a solid object. I don't mind if it's smooth or not smooth. And maybe I should deactivate a couple of these things. Yeah, I'm going to take away subsurface modifier because that could be something that was potentially in my way. And now, now, now it's not move. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so sub steps. Whew. It's very pretty. And where it's slowed down, where it starts out nice and slow, it's also very solid. Where it got faster, it is not solid. In order to increase the sol sol solid solid in order to increase the solid uh, in order to solidify that, I'm going to increase my sub steps uh, up another one, and bake it. Not awful. I'm going to hop up twice. See if I can even slow this down. This is really wonderful. You don't have to clear the bake before rebaking the image. So it's gone from one and a half seconds to 8.4. Oh, I hardly feel myself growing older. 8.4 seconds is delightful.
So there it is. Uh, forward and back. So really, oh, that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> it really just is wiping on the paint and then going over itself. So I guess I could have just uh, uh, baked even a part of that. But now we have a texture. We can do something with that texture and the particle system. If I hit animate, alt A, nothing really happens. Let's get up close and see that thing. Nothing really happens. Good. Hang on to that memory. Now, let's take care of textures. Let's make a new texture and let's just call it wiped. And I can use this texture tab button to hop right to it. We are going to open an image sequence. And image sequence is not an option, but it will be detected. So I'll select the first one in the uh, bunch and open that image. Now we have 250 by mistake. We only need 81. So rather than a single image, I will choose image sequence. I will continue to use the alpha. I will now stretch the frames from 1 to 81. I will begin at the default of 1 and I will not offset. I will not make this happen later. And I will automatically let it refresh. That's an important button. Now what does this do? What I want it to do is handle the visibility of uh, of these of these suckers and so right now it does nothing if I put it to lifetime they sort of grow with it along that path you can see them sort of happening in that direction and if I change that value to a negative one it doesn't like reverse course and so <laughs> it is kind of fun to watch though if we use it to handle density I don't see a lot happening there. This is an effect that I've had some trouble um, with in the past. Oh, I should put that at one just to make sure that it's back where it wants to be. And if we let this affect the size, it really doesn't have a lot to play with in terms of well, what do you mean? Um, density is the one. So let's let it affect density density but instead of growing the density the way it's trying to do right now yeah instead of growing out the density let's have it go backwards and one way that we can make it go backwards is not to render it again render it again but to change the influence of the dynamic paint I've had some weird hits and misses with this. Uh, now that I see what's happening, I wonder if I can't make it more definite. See, it's like, it's so bizarre. I'd really hoped this example would be so smooth. I click seed, sometimes that changes thing to, things around. Now that I'm coming backward, we know that the density should be filling in those spaces, but I don't see them filling in. Now, it kind of takes it away in a weird swirl. We can double check the influence of that paint map by using it to color the windscreen. I think I'm gonna do that. And now, let's see what this will show us. When I click to materials, I might as well just click into a rendered view, eh? Uh, we can't see anything, but now we can see that certainly this is happening and it's happening the right way. We'll go to the texture via this button and there we have our colors, there we have the image, here we have the mapping. Is the mapping generated? The mapping is based upon the UV. And when it's based upon the UV, we have some greater success 
with the mapping of that object. Let me go back into the material tree type node tree editor and find out if I can jog the particle system back into position here. We can activate a different look by using the dynamic paint, which is what we put in right here as an image. What? What? Which is what we put in right here as an image sequence. So, how can I mix it in? What should I do to mix it in? What I'm going to do is use that bunch of uh, image sequence, not for the sake of uh, adding a diffuse or anything like that to see color, but this is not as complete as it could be. I will add a mix shader and I will duplicate my refraction. I'll put that refraction in as the second shader and now I'm going to use the UV mapped image sequence to control going between the first refraction and the second refraction. You know, black and white makes it easy. Why don't we? So it's zero and one, alpha of one, I believe, looks white. So if I change this, that is where things have wiped. And since we have not wiped the windscreen with pure blood, I will remove the saturation, restoring it to its original color of white. But what I will do is where we have not wiped, increase the roughness so that the image looks a bit out of sorts. Combine that roughness of refraction with the droplets from the emitter particle system, which I can now, I don't know why I, and we have something that passes as a cartoon, but we have the concept. Very happy. I'll be happy if this particle system plays nice and uh, follows along, but I can tweak that with the seed. Uh, this must be some sort of weird bug in Blender right here. And it's not something that I can explain to you. A long, long time ago, I made a comment on a user form. You know, forget that story. Let's go to render. Postscript, I saved the file, held my breath, and was able to increase the number of particles from 2,000 to 5,000. I then lowered their size from 0.1 to 0.05 and increased the random size from 0.25 to 0.5. I just used the right arrow to get this far and it works. I'm really glad to report that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, saved file and pray is what I did. So that was the success there. I may even, while I have you on the line, shuttle the seed. That seems to be one thing that helps a great deal is messing with that seed forward and backward and forward and backward. And it kind of resets the alignment between the particle system and the texture that you create. Now we're up to 10,000 and survey says it is working. It is sluggish, but it is working. Unbelievable. I have been this passenger. I have seen this before. <laughs> and that is it for my postscript.